Hey everyone, today we are going to design a system like Uber, a platform that connects riders and drivers in real time, handles thousands of concurrent users, tracks locations live and ensures that interactions are smooth and secure. Designing a system like Uber involves creating robust APIs and an architecture capable of handling real-time requests, location tracking and seamless interactions between riders and drivers. So let's dive into the components and the journey of ride request from start to finish. All right, let's dive into designing a system like Uber. But before we even touch the design, let's talk about a key step in any system design interview, clarifying requirements with the interviewer. This is especially important with a company like Uber that has multiple services under its brand, like Uber Eats, Uber Feet, and the core ride hailing service. In our case, we'll be focusing specifically on the right service. Clarifying scope like this upfront has big advantages. First, it narrows down the problem so that we can dive deep into one aspect without being spread thin. Second, it aligns us that what the interviewer actually wants to see, helping ensure we are on the right track from the start. And finally, it sets the stage for high quality design, letting us concentrate on the features that matters most for the specific service. Defining the scope isn't just a time saver. It's a way to build a solution that actually useful for the scenario at hand. Now, when building APIs for Uber, we have a few core goals, simplicity, performance, scalability, and security. We want API that are easy to use, quick to respond, and capable of handling high demand. For simplicity and scalability, we design APIs using REST principles. This keeps things structured and predictable. You should consider implementing OAuth 2.0, SSL TLS encryption and strict input validation to ensure data security and integrity. Versioning via URL like API slash V1 allows us to update APIs without disrupting existing services. And finally, standard HTTP status codes will give developers a consistent experience. Let's break down the essential API endpoints for each user group. Riders request a ride by specifying pickup and drop off locations and ride type. And it might look something similar to this where you have a body with pickup and drop off location and the type of ride. Get ride status retrieves the current status of the ride. For example, searching, driver assigned, arriving, in transit, or completed. Cancel ride allows the rider to cancel any ongoing ride request, which can be a simple post request like this. Get driver location provides real-time location of the assigned driver for tracking. Typically, the location of the driver will be tracked using a WebSocket connection as WebSockets are excellent for pushing real-time updates to the client. But when a rider is assigned a driver, they might use the get endpoint to retrieve the driver's initial location before starting the WebSocket connection. Including both the WebSocket real-time updates and the get endpoint for driver location provides a more robust and user-friendly system. It ensures that the riders have consistent access to important information, enhancing reliability and overall user experience. Now let's go to the driver side of the APIs. Here, we have update availability, where drivers update whether they are available or not. Update location is for drivers real-time location updates, which are sent frequently for accurate tracking. And then there is accept ride request, which drivers can accept ride request assigned to them. Update ride status covers status changes throughout the ride from arriving to completed. Now again, for real-time updates, we use WebSockets. When a driver is en route, Riders want to see their exact location in real time, and WebSockets make this possible by allowing continuous updates. This means no constant polling. Instead, we have a smooth, efficient connection pushing the data to the client as soon as there is a change. All right, let's talk about database design. Designing the database for a system like Uber involves choosing the right type of database and structuring it to efficiently handle core functionalities such as ride request, driver management, and real-time tracking. We'll explore both relational and NoSQL database options here and outline the schema design with key tables and provide mock data examples to illustrate how the data is organized. By utilizing a hybrid database approach, we can leverage the strength of both relational and NoSQL databases to efficiently handle the core functionalities of Uber systems from the rider and driver perspectives. So, we use a relational database for structured transactional data suitable for structured data like storing user information, in this case, riders and drivers, managing their roles and their statuses, and recording transactions and payment history. 
we will use a no sql database for real time high frequency data such as storing real time location data or handling high write or read throughput for location updates all right with that in mind let's check out all the tables we got the users table is the foundational table that stores basic information about all users of the platform including both riders and drivers this table centralizes common user attributes enabling unified user management and authentication process profile information contains personal data such as name and phone number user type field is used to distinguish between riders and drivers allowing the system to tailor functionalities accordingly the drivers table stores information specific to drivers that is not applicable to riders the separation adheres to database normalization principles by avoiding unnecessary null fields in the users table for rider specific data Vehicle information here stores details about the driver's vehicle such as make, model and license plate number. Driver status tracks the driver's availability such as available or unavailable, which is crucial for matching riders with drivers. It references the user ID from the users table to link driver specific data with the general user profile. The ride table records every ride request made by the riders and tracks their current statuses. It serves as the primary record for each ride transaction. containing essential details needed throughout the ride's life cycle for example ride tracking here stores the current status of each ride such as requested assigned or in transit location data contains the pickup and drop off coordinates which are vital for navigation and fare calculation the participant references links to the rider and once assigned the driver involved in the ride the ride updates table maintains a detailed history of all status changes for each ride It logs every transition the ride goes through along with timestamps providing a comprehensive timeline of the ride's progression. The historical record keeps the sequential log of status changes such as requested to assigned to in transit. It supports analysis of ride duration in each status helping to identify bottlenecks or inefficiencies and provides an audit trail that can be essential for resolving disputes or meeting regulatory requirements. Again it's important to note here that separating status updates adheres to normalization principles. preventing redundancy in the rights table it allows for more efficient queries when retrieving status histories without scanning the larger rights table storing each status change in the rights update table allows us to track the entire life cycle of the right from the initial request to completion or cancellation this detailed history is valuable for auditing purposes helping to investigate issues disputes or anomalies in ride processing in fact support teams can reference the status history to address rider or driver's inquiries effectively let's suppose a ride experiences several status changes as like this with ride subject table each of this transition is recorded with a time stamp providing a complete picture of the ride progression this level of detail is not possible if only update the status in the ride table and like we discussed previously for handling real time location tracking and quick access to active drivers A NoSQL database like Redis or MongoDB is more suitable. The driver location table stores the most recent known locations of drivers. While it's better suited for a NoSQL database due to this high frequency of updates, including it in the SQL database can also provide a snapshot of driver locations that can be useful for certain queries. Also, during an active ride, both the driver's and the rider's location may update every few seconds. The ride status can change rapidly. for example from arriving to in transit and users expect immediate feedback and updates in the app the active rides collection is needed to efficiently manage real time data for rides that are currently in progress no sql databases are designed to handle the needs of applications where data changes rapidly and needs to be accessed quickly this allows the system to provide low latency access essential for real time tracking and notifications enhancing the user experience all right Let's go through an example scenario and see how the tables are being updated. In this case, our rider Alice requests a ride and driver Bob accepts and provides the service. So Alice's app sends a request with her location and destination. This inserts data into the rides table and publishes a ride requested event. The matching service picks up the ride requested event, finds the closest available driver, in this case Bob, and assigns him to the ride. Bob gets a notification and his app shows Alice's pickup point and here is how the update rides table looks like it also inserts into the ride updates table as bob drives towards alice his location updates every few seconds this is managed in the driver locations collection in our nosql database and streamed to alice's app via web sockets connection for real time tracking once bob picks up alice he updates the ride status to in transit 
the status changes are tracked in both the writes table and write updates table to maintain history. And when the write is over, Bob marks it as completed and the system updates the status. This is also when payment processing can kick in. So in this case, it will update the writes table and then insert into the write updates table. The payments table then records the transaction details and once completed, both Alice and Bob receive a summary. And here is how insert into payments table look like. So speaking of high level architecture, we have two main apps which act as the front end, a rider app and a driver app. A rider app allows riders to request rides, view driver locations in real time and receive ride updates. Driver app enables drivers to accept ride requests, update their availability status and navigate to riders locations. When it comes to backend services, each core function is managed by a dedicated backend service. API Gateway acts as the entry point for request. It handles authentication, routing, and basic rate limiting. Write Service manages the ride lifecycle from creation, status updates, and completion. It coordinates interactions between riders and driver services. Driver Service keeps track of driver availability and location, providing essential data for matching riders with drivers. Matching Service matches ride requests with available drivers based on proximity and other criteria. And finally, the location service handles a real-time location tracking for drivers and riders, storing recent updates for quick access. Here we are using relational database to store user profiles, ride details, and transaction history. And an in-memory data store such as Redis, which caches frequently accessed data like active drivers and ride status for quick retrieval. Now, if you have seen my previous video on EDA or event-driven architecture, we took a deep dive into how companies like Netflix and Uber leverage this pattern to handle high volumes of data. In that video, we explored how these companies use EDA to maintain seamless operations, even under massive demand. So definitely check that out if you want more real-world examples of EDA in action. Using an event-driven architecture helps Uber system scale efficiently by enabling asynchronous communication between services. Message broker like Apache Kafka is used as central hub for events. It manages different topics, like ride request or driver updates. The producers publish events. For example, a ride service publishes a ride requested. Consumers subscribe to events they need. For example, matching service consumes a ride requested to find a driver. And here are some other topics we'll be using. A ride request, when a rider requests a ride. Driver updates topic, which updates on driver's status and location. A ride status changes, it changes in the status of rides and notifications, which is events triggering user notifications. These topics can also be partitioned to enhance throughput and scalability, often based on geographical regions or user IDs. Do check out my video on Kafka Crash Course to understand these concepts in depth. So from the perspective of services and topics, Ride Service acts as the producer. It publishes a ride requested event to the ride requested topic. Matching Service is both consumer and producer. It consumes the ride requested event, processes the matching logic to find an available driver, and publishes driver assigned event to the ride status changes topic. Driver service consumes driver assigned events and updates the driver status to reflect the new assignment. Notification service subscribes to ride status changes and notifications topic, sending notifications to riders and drivers about the ride status updates. Real-time communication service acts as consumer. It consumes events and pushes real-time updates to clients via WebSockets. Speaking of WebSockets, WebSockets enable persistent bi-directional communication between clients, in our case, riders and driver apps, and the server, which is crucial for real-time updates such as location tracking and ride status changes. The use of WebSockets is managed by a dedicated real-time communication service, providing the necessary infrastructure for real-time updates, which are critical for a seamless user experience in ride-sharing applications like Uber. Let's explore how WebSocket connections are established and managed in our system. First, the clients, the rider and driver apps, initiate a WebSocket connection to the real-time communication service using a secure WebSocket URL, such as wss://api.uber.com. On the server side, the server accepts the connection and performs an initial handshake to establish communication channel. Immediately after connection is initiated, the client sends an authentication token 
like JWT or JSON Web Token. The real-time communication service verifies this token to authenticate the user securely, and if the token is valid, the connection is upgraded to full WebSocket connection, allowing for persistent real-time communication between client and server. And once authenticated, the service maps the connection to the user's unique ID, effectively linking the WebSocket connection to that specific user. Clients can then subscribe to the relevant channels, such as write specific updates or notifications, ensuring they receive information pertinent to the current activities. Again, our system handles both incoming and outgoing messages over these WebSocket connections. For incoming messages, the service can receive messages from clients when needed. For example, a driver app might send real-time location updates or status changes. Let's break down what happens from the moment a rider requests a ride to when a driver accepts it. First, the rider app sends a post request to the ride service, which includes all the necessary ride details like the pickup and drop-off locations. The ride service then validates the request, creates a new ride entry into the database, and publishes a ride requested event to the ride requested topic in Kafka. Now, the matching service, which is subscribed to the ride request topic, picks up that ride requested event. It fetches a list of available servers from the driver service or a cache, then applies its matching logic to find the nearest or most suitable driver for the rider. Once the best driver is found, the matching service updates the ride record with its driver's information and publishes a driver assigned event to the ride status changes topic. The notification service consumes the driver assigned event and sends a push notification to the driver's app, notifying them about the new ride request. And when the driver receives this notification, they can either accept or decline the ride. If they accept, the driver app sends back an acceptance message either via WebSocket or directly to the ride service. As soon as the ride service gets the driver acceptance, it updates the ride status to driver accepted in the database and publishes a ride status changed event for tracking and communication. And once the driver is en route, real-time updates kick in to keep both the driver and the rider synced. The driver's app send location updates periodically to the driver service using REST API call, and the driver service then publishes these updates as driver location updated events to the driver updates topic. Our real-time communication service subscribes to the driver updates topic, receiving those driver location updated events. With each location update, the service identifies which rider is connected to the ride and pushes the driver's latest location to the rider's app via WebSocket. This keeps the rider informed about the driver's real-time progress. During the ride, the driver's app may send updates on the ride status, such as arriving, in transit, or completed. Each time the driver app sends a status update, the ride service updates the status in the database and publishes a new ride status changed event. The real-time communication service and notification service are constantly monitoring for any new ride status changed or driver updates events, ensuring that both the rider and driver apps receive these updates in real time. The system keeps everyone on the same page, ensuring a smooth and synchronized experience for both the rider and driver. It's a complex dance of real-time data, but when it works, it feels seamless. Here, we have covered API design, database structure, real-time communication with WebSockets, and even event-driven architecture to tie it all together. Each of these components work to deliver a seamless real-time experience for both riders and drivers. In a future video, we'll dive deeper into one of these components, perhaps a closer look at the matching service or real-time tracking architecture.